Good evening, everybody, and this is Noreen McClendon with another segment of Free to Heal. I'm your host, moderator, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we had another great session today. This evening, we were fortunate to have the author of The Hurt Help Book by Tavakis Dawson. The Hurt Help Book by Tavakis Dawson. Mr. Dawson wrote this book as a way to help us deal with various what he calls syndromes in our communities. And there are a wide range of them from drug dealers to drug users, enablers, guilty by association, um, white collar criminals, sense of entitlement, abusers, bullies, prostitutes, gamblers, convicts, gangsters, needing anger management, and manipulators. And um, what he does is he describes the syndrome and the things that those particular characteristics tend to um, say or use uh, to justify their behavior. And um, then he has you to read what those syndromes are. He, he has illustrations in the book that are phenomenal. And he asks you to describe what you see. I'm not going to show you all of those things today. I suggest you get his book uh, when you get an, an opportunity. But we had a, a lively discussion um, about the book and different things. And uh, one of the topics that came up that generated a lot of discussion was people needing anger management. And as a result of that, these are some of the things that were discussed that I hope that you will enjoy uh, as you as you watch. One of the participants discussed that a challenge in anger for him is um, in dealing with it in a way that doesn't hurt anyone else. When he's hurt, that he doesn't want to hurt anyone else. He wants to learn how to deal with his anger in a way that doesn't cause hurt to anyone else. Um, and there are things that he does. He'll breathe. He'll uh, do breathing exercises. He will uh, walk away from the situation. These are things that he uses. There are lots of tools, uh, five-second rules. Some people need three seconds, some 10, some even 20 seconds, counting backwards from 10 to give them an opportunity to think about those things that um, are better choices because in the anger process, being upset and angry, particularly if you're hurt, it may cause you to do things and you need to think about the consequences of those actions for folks. So yourself and those around you. One of the uh, sayings, we've probably all heard the saying that hurt people hurt people. But our author tonight was with us and he indicated and he added the positive end of that, which is hurt people hurt people, but healed people heal people. And obviously that was near and dear to our heart here at Free to Heal because what we come together every week to do as formerly incarcerated loved ones and children of people who have been incarcerated is for us to heal from the ravages of what incarceration has done in our families, in our lives, and in our communities. So hurt people hurt people, but heal people heal people. And we're trying to be those healed people that help you to heal. And we are always grateful when you take that journey with us. Um, the um, Another thing that came out is, is a gentleman said, and I think this is really important to understand, nobody can make you hurt them. So sometimes people make an excuse or justify hurting someone else. Abusers do this often. I wouldn't have done that. Look what you made me do. No, nobody made you do anything. Likewise, when people say, well, you just make me feel some type of way. No, you feel that way because that's what you believe about yourself in the first place. So nobody can make you do anything. And certainly nobody can make you hurt them. Those are choices that we make, even in instances where we feel our family or someone is threatened. Those are choices that we make in those moments that we believe 
are the best choice for us at that time. Oftentimes, you get a lot of time to sit down and think about the fact that was it really the best decision for everyone involved? So uh, taking the time to stop and think about what we're doing, particularly in a moment where we're hurt, is really important for us to do. Uh, Another good thing that came out tonight, there were a couple of things that the author said that I thought were awesome and I want us to think about. When ego and pride show up, move out of the situation within one minute. When ego and pride show up, move out of the situation in one minute. Why? Because what typically comes after that is not beneficial to you or those that you're involved with. So I think that is a great thing to keep in your mind. When you see the ego enter into the equation, there's a conversation, there's a confrontation, whatever it is. When your ego and your pride are triggered, walk away. It takes more strength to walk away than it does to engage. So that is a great practice and a tool that you can use. Again, at Free to Heal, we're about tools that you can use on a practical level every day that will help you heal from the things that have happened in your life and to prevent you from Uh, going into incarceration and having to deal with the criminal justice system at all. Another one that he said that I loved was, you can't run from the problem if you are the problem. Whoa, holla at your girl. If you are your problem, you go wherever you are. You go where you go. You take the problem with you because you are the problem. I want to encourage you, if you find that you're always in conflict, there's always some drama in your life, there's always somebody disrespecting you and all those things, chances are the problem is not them, it's you. It's you. When you find that you can't have decent relationship with anybody, you're always in a traumatic drama filled situation, the problem is usually you. And no matter where you go, you are taking you and all of the problem with you. You are the baggage that is standing between you and a peaceful life. We also discussed the fact tonight that happiness is a choice. Even in circumstances where bad things happen to good people, There is a way to choose happiness. And so these are things that we have to realize about us that we can control those things. We cannot control what happens to us, but we can control how we respond to it. So those are things, tools that we want to use. I want to make sure that I didn't leave anything out. Um, (laughs) You can turn a negative into a positive. By doing better for yourself, doing things that will better you as a person, spending time working on those things that make you a better person, you can change a negative situation into a positive. The author of this book has been incarcerated. He decided when he was incarcerated that he needed to learn a trade which he's now been able to come out and use to support himself in a legal way. Um, He encouraged all of us in the group that we can use re-entry as a time to reinvent ourselves. And we've had that conversation on Free to Heal before. Let's look at the re-entry process as an opportunity to become who we always wanted to be. It's an opportunity to do better, be better, and have the life that we want. These are opportunities. It's not going to be easy. Nobody's promising easy, but you do have that as an option. So I just want to um, encourage you with that. Another thing, finally, that I think this is important that, that the author said tonight. Having a support system is important. And it's really good for us to have a support system. However, he said, 
Self-accountability is the most necessary thing that you can have in life. Having that personal accountability. I'm a big proponent of self-responsibility. You cannot hurt me if I don't put you in position to either care enough about you, get close enough to me to hurt me, unless I allow that. I'm accountable for that. When I learned that I was responsible to protect my heart, um, nobody has ever been able to break my heart in the way that I was devastated as a young woman because I'm responsible. And if I see that things are headed in a direction where they may break my heart, I'm responsible to step away from that. So these are all tools that we can use, things that help us to be at peace and to choose happiness. And I hope and pray that you get as much out of this session of Free to Heal as I did. And I look forward to seeing you. Please leave your comments, questions in the comment section. Let us know what you think. And we'll look forward to seeing you again next week on Free to Heal. And again, I'm Noreen McClendon. Check us out on all social media and let's heal ourselves. Bye-bye. <laughs> So good evening, everybody. Welcome to Free to Heal. Tonight we have author Tavakas Dawson. Tavakas Dawson is the author of the Hurt Help book. And I'm going to turn it over to him and let him tell tell everybody all about itself. All right. Um, as she mentioned, uh, my name is Tavakas Dawson. Um, I'm the CEO of the Hurt Help group. And I'm the author of the Hurt Help book. And... The main reason that I actually wrote the book is to give uh, our communities a place to talk about whatever trauma that they have been through, uh, whatever addictions that they might have. Um, and our community, we're not too quick to go to a, a therapist, uh, a counselor, and just you know lay it all out and let and let people know what's actually bothering us. So the Hurt Help book was created to where they could be able to just be vulnerable and just uh, basically like self-help, self-therapy. Uh, if they choose to go to a therapy later on, at least they have somewhat of a, uh, a reference guide to give that uh, clinician. So uh, you have characters as far as the drug dealer, the drug user, the manipulator, the sense of entitlement, uh, convict, so forth, so on. Basically, you know, all the characters that plague our community on a daily basis. So I just wanted to uh, create a tool, a resource to uh, be able to give back to our community. Uh, I come from that background. I come from an ab abusive home. If y'all can hear the twang, I'm originally from Louisiana. So uh, moved here when I was 18, got into the gang life, drug life. Uh, but a lot of that started back home. So L.A. was just a bigger playground for me to do what I, would, I was already doing uh, in the South. But once I overcame that lifestyle, I, I, I felt like I had somewhat of a blueprint to, uh, to give our community to help them overcome it. So the tool, the resources here, uh, it's just a blessing to be a blessing. You know, many seeds was planted over time to get me to where I am right now. So I'm just giving back uh, to our people what was so freely given to me. So here I am, you know, um, I just, I, I'm just thankful to be here and to be able to present this to y'all. And what I wanna, what I, what I wanna do is I wanna take a second and just tell you how the book is laid out because, um, so when he talks about the different characters, um, so there's going to be, he'll give you the character. She'll describe the syndrome and the things that are associated with that. So this first one is the drug dealer. Okay. And then he describes what that syndrome is and some, some of the things that people say, um, when they're drug dealers, I'm going to read some of them to you. If I don't sell it to them, somebody else will. Um, if I'm not forcing, I'm not forcing anybody to buy it. It's their choice. Um, they shouldn't be doing it if they can't handle it. I didn't make them lose their family. 
I have to make this big money so my family can have a better life. Note, a drug dealer is someone who has no boundaries regarding whom he or she sells illegal narcotics to. This individual does not consider selling drugs an addiction. On the contrary, the addiction is greed for money or anything of value. And then after that, um, there's a there's things for you to describe. To the best of your knowledge, give examples and explain how hurt has been a part of the drug dealer's life. So this is for you to dig deep into yourself and find the answers to your questions. Now, and then the next one is the help. Now explain what can be done to help the drug dealers' irrational thinking. Excuse me. <laughs> That's not necessarily the most positive solution. It, it may is. work. It is ended. But then he has illustrations um, of different things which are very detailed. And then he asks you to explain what you see in the illustration. So it's a very interactive book that actually helps you deal with it. And the one thing I found in the book was if we could conquer the just the ills that are described, the different syndromes in this book, um, our community would be much better. And I'm so curious, M M Mr. Terrell, baby, what you eating? I'm so hungry. Why you, why you, what, what you eating, baby? <laughs> I mean the salad. I mean, I mean a homemade salad. Okay, well, see that you know what, and then you and then Roberta got the banana pudding. Y'all really, y'all just showing out on me tonight. Where the banana pudding out, at? Number one. Where the banana pudding at? Yeah, see, last time, I, where the banana pudding at? She got it over there. She keeping it to roll to herself. That's crazy. That's crazy. Ain't that something? That's all right. Well, we know what's happening. But anyways, you know what? what? I seen a movie one time where they had. Uh, 72 hours. Mm -hmm. You could kill anybody you wanted in your name. Oh, the purge. Yeah. The purge. That was uh, one of my, my girlfriend's sons starred in that movie. Okay. It was horrible. Oh, uh, it's all right. You well, know? <laughs> well, anyhow, just think if you had a year, right? One year where you could shoot all the dope dealers, all the pimps, all the pieces of shit. But let me tell you no, this, though. Who decides who that is, though, Pike? The one with the pistol. Uh, see. So anyhow, but I'm saying, for one year, whoever you shot, so be it. And then at the end of the year, you went back to normal. Good luck with that. Let me no, just tell you I'm this. Just saying, you go back to A lot of people wouldn't be here. Now, you probably wouldn't be here neither, Pike. Huh? He said, you probably wouldn't be here neither. Well, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> Listen. I, I'm old, dude. I'm 73 years old. Somebody takes me out. I ain't missed a goddamn thing. But this is the thing, right? That kind of that kind of that kind of lawlessness, we are certainly, and I want to reiterate, we are not advocating that, okay? Nobody. You understand, you understand that, Pike? We are I not am. everybody listening. Don't be listening to this fool. That was a movie, okay? And we got enough death by gun violence out here. We got people, young people getting shot because they rang the wrong doorbell and all this kind of stuff. We got way too much gun violence. We don't even need well, to be... Just think what would happen at the end of the year. It'd be a whole lot of people dead. That's right. That's it. And guess no, what? No, no, what? And when you go back to normal Pike, it'd be right back to the way it was before because because people they do those kinds right. of things. You know what? That's not true. You you think they could get rid of everybody? Somebody would be stepping into that, filling that void. Wouldn't be that many. Well, one thing is for sure, we trying to do the hurt help. We trying to help the hurt that's in our communities. That's what we about. That's what I'm talking about. That ain't helping. No, what you're doing is add more hurt. Because what I want you to realize is, and this is something that is really serious to me, and um, all joking aside, is that we don't often talk about um, and explore the damage to the perpetrators' families either. Mm -hmm. When all of you guys were incarcerated, your family suffered. Big time. Can we not t testify to that, Di? Amen. Okay. We all suffered. If you're dead, it's even worse. Right. Okay. So the notion that we just going to, you know, kill off the, the bad and whatever... All that does is leave more hurt in its wake. Mm -hmm. um, not to mention the
the fact that I believe that our communities really suffer because they took the leadership out of our communities. Yes. They took the best and brightest of ours out of our communities. I know people who were really, really smart, bright, intelligent people who could do great things for our communities. And if they ever got their hands on them, they tried never to let them go again. They tried to make sure they kept them for very long periods of time. I ain't talking about them. Well, but it's okay. It don't matter. And like I say, it, at the end of the day, perpetrators, no matter who they are, when you, their family suffer, um, one perpetration, particularly in gang life and stuff, one thing leads to another. Okay, you killed them, so now I feel like I need to retaliate. And that is a constant thing. I know when I was doing hardcore gang intervention, that was the one thing we were trying to prevent more than anything else was retaliation. So what? how did we do that? We tried to get ahead of the rumor mill. Um, if somebody from your neighborhood got killed, instantly y'all assume it's whatever your favorite rival target is, not knowing who it is. A lot of times what I found is a lot of that was more internal stuff than it was, especially than it was opposite or rival gangs. I would. I realized after some years that if you ever found a crime of a gang member and you couldn't get any intelligence on it at all, it was internal. That was my experience. More often, I'm going to say nine out of ten times, it was internal. It was somebody in their set that had done that, and that's why you couldn't get no information. I see you shaking your hair, Roberta. <laughs> you know, huh? So, so the thing of it is, is that um, those kinds of things always lead to more violence. So that's all I'm saying is that, you know, we, I honestly believe if we can take care of just the, just the syndromes here, um, the, the drug dealer, um, the drug user, the enabler, um, people who enable um, drug dealers and, and people with addictions and uh, gambling addictions and all sorts of stuff people who enabled a narcissistic personality. Um, if we can cure some of those, guilty by association. Anybody in here know anything about being guilty by association? Okay. Um, white collar criminals. Okay. Uh, no, you just, <laughs> you're not a white collar. You wasn't oh, white. No, 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 you that was not. white. No, yeah, you, no, you didn't have a collar. You, you were just white. You had a white criminal, white. but you just you didn't have a collar, boo. <laughs> you was robbing. You were just you, white. You was doing blue collar stuff. Look. <laughs> you were just white. He was just white, that's all. Um, a sense of entitlement. Um, the abuser. I mean, how many of us have been subject to some form of abuse? You see what I'm right. saying? I mean, that's true. Whether it's verbal, mental, um, sexual, physical. All of us have had something, and I know all of you have it, nothing else because y'all been incarcerated, and we already know the COs are abusive. You said the institution, they're abusive by nature. Mm -hmm. you know? So we know that. Um, the bullying, exactly. That's how they run it, right? The prostitute, the gambler, the convict, the gangster. Hey, Patrick, this one is for you. Patrick? Patrick? Uh-oh, Patrick fell asleep. I hear you. Uh oh Needing anger management. Right. All the time. <laughs> Patrick tell us all the time. I need anger management. And this is the, this is another one. The manipulator. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. That's, That's the biggest coward. one. Say that again, Pike. That's the coward. Is the manipulator. More, more times out of 10. That's, that's mostly inside. The one with spread rumors and everything, and, and then when the shit goes down, he go high. He's a freaking coward. Okay, <laughs> but the but the need need uh need anger management, Patrick. Talk to me about that. Now, with anger management, it's always a constant work in progress. Just like if you're an addict or if you're an enabler, you have to work on it constantly. 
like I said, over the weekend, I was feeling a little angry and everything, and it was just the environment. As soon as I got into school with a different environment, as soon as I start talking with you guys, it starts to ease off. So, like, we talk about this all the time. Relations is all about communication. Yes. Mr. Bradley, interested in what you're thinking? Well, hmm. Pipe, Pipe, Pipe is, he's something special. He's real special. <laughs> and, you know, as far as, uh, if you go around killing off people, that make you worse than them. Okay. And uh, it's like, uh, the then with anger, when it comes to anger, it's like I said, that's just a second human emotion. We all get anger. And it's like with me, I learned how to recognize it, deal with it. And, and as far as anger, it's like, a, I look at it as a defense of me being hurt. If I get hurt, then I automatically get angry because that's like protecting myself from not getting hurt again. But it's what I do with that anger that, you know, would count because we all, humans, we get angry. So with me, it's like what I do with that anger is try to challenge it in another way that I don't hurt anyone else with it. You know, because once I recognize that anger, I realize what hurt, what made me angry. Did something this person said, how can I let this person's words hurt me? Or uh, some, you know, anything like that. So it's like uh, I do my little breathing thing, or I, I exercise, or I walk away. I, I think I take a uh, hit that five minute switch to, to think about things first, because it's like you know, it's like can't nobody control me or make me do anything to hurt them. And so it's like I'm in control of my anger. No one else can control me of, of my anger, make me do something that, you know, I don't want to do or hurt someone else. And then with the anger, you think of consequences. If I lash out at someone with words or anything, I'm hurting someone else because I'm hurt. That hurt make other people, make you hurt others. And once I recognize that right there, that I'm, uh, I get angry to hurt someone because I'm hurt, and I'm like, wait a minute, let me get control of this right here because... This ain't right right here. I'm called someone calls me pain. Now I want to call someone else's pain. And that you know, ain't right. Um, it's funny you say that because for me, um, you can make me angry and I may not want to strike back. But if you hurt me, that's when I get more more willing to fight in a situation as if I'm hurt as opposed to if I'm just angry. It, well, you you defend you defend yourself. Like one guy, one guy. When I was incarcerated, he say, uh, it was a situation between me and him. He say, hey, man, uh, he said, do I, he asked me, do I want to fight him? I'm like, uh, I thought about it. I said, no, I really don't want to fight you. I said, do you want to fight me? And he's like, no. And it's like, well, what are we doing then? You know, we don't really want to fight each other. Maybe, it's like he said, manipulation. Somebody who said something to him or uh, said something to me to make me think this person wanted to jump on me by us communicating with one another and talking do you want to, hey, you want to fight? No, I, we don't want to fight each other. We don't want to get all punched up, brain damage and all that. And so we like, so what, why are we here? Then you find out someone else will manipulate the fight because they want to see some entertainment, want to see us fight each other and probably get shot in the yard or something like that. You know, go, it, yeah, come back to thinking. So Like Pipe, Pipe want to go around blowing everybody's brains out there. He think it's bad. <laughs> reading over here, yeah, and I wanted you to just share what you what your thoughts were on what he was saying. Yeah, uh, I was agreeing. You're absolutely right. Uh, you know, it'd be ego and uh pride a lot of times that uh get us in situations that we normally wouldn't want to be in. And uh, I like to tell people, whenever ego and pride show up, remove yourself from that space uh within a minute mm -hmm. because. If you stay longer, again, you're going to wind up doing something that you're going to wind up regretting. And, you know, I've been incarcerated uh, before as well. And the most hurtful feeling is being behind bars, thinking about what you should have, could have done. And now here it is. You got one, two, three, five, 10, 15, 20 years to, uh, to think about that mistake. And that's exactly what it is. It's a mistake. Uh you, you, you talked about uh, how hurt people hurt people, and that's absolutely true. And I saw a post on Instagram one time, and it said, hurt people hurt people, but heal people heal people. Mm, mm. So once once you start the healing process, now it's like iron sharpens iron. You know, you didn't got your healing, and 
you didn't got yourself on the right track and now you're able to bless somebody else uh with that so i i totally agree with you because well I done been in those situations and it's like, man, I really don't want to do nothing to this brother and this brother don't want to do nothing to me. And, you know, y'all wind up becoming a uh, best of friends or y'all wind up finding out y'all got a lot in common as well. So, uh, it, I, I like how you said, I think you said, uh, the five second, uh, uh, uh some rule, three second, uh, a rule that you said, uh, but it, it's glad. That yeah. You, uh, the, the time to think. Yeah. The gear yeah, says that quick think. second to think before you act. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's good to have those type of resources, uh, all the programs that they have and, you know, literature like the hurt help book. And I, I, I did fed time. So I took the RDAP program. I never did state, but I done been to wayside and County and all that. And, uh, they didn't have no, no programs up in there, uh, at that time. So, <laughs> All the resources and the programs that y'all took, man, I'll be, I be hearing the brothers, you know, that uh, when they regurgitate a lot of stuff that they learn, and that's what's going to help you out here in this uh, in the free world, you know, in the reentry uh, population as well. So I just commend, you know, all of y'all on uh, continuing to do the work and, you know, wanting to succeed. And, man, hey, I always like to say, man, I salute you. Yeah. That's okay, Tony. Thank you, thank you. You in the house, Miss Tony? Miss Tony, hello. Hey, good evening, everyone. Sorry, I'm not there. Miss you. You're not half as sorry as I am that you're not here. I know. I will be, there. I will be back next week. Uh, excuse me. Where's my um? I'm bringing it. I'm bringing it next week. I promise. It's a lot going on today. From, from funeral to crisis, but I'll be there next week. Yeah, that's absolutely wonderful. Rufus. I'm interested in seeing what you got on your mind, Rufus. Talk to me. Um, I like the idea of what he said. I never, you know, it makes a whole lot of sense, but I never heard that as far as uh, heal people, heal people, and 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 and, and that's that you know that's so true because now that I'm in my healing in my healing um stage you know i uh, all i want to do is share what i know and 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 want you know other people to feel what i feel in terms of you know my recovery my healing you know and you know i like you know i tell a lot of people now that i'm out here you know it's easy to, it's easy to live it, it's easy to be out here you know what i mean it's not it, it's it's just you know, I can't help but keep saying that it's 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 easy to be out here. You know what I mean? With the with the mindset that I used to have, you know, I thought that you know, um, you know that that was the way to go. That that's the only you know options that I had. But you know, a after going through you know all the stuff that I went through and my recovery, it's just it, it, you know my eyes are wide open and and you know my heart is you know. Um, it, it, it's full of love and I just want to spread that with other people. So that, that, that idea of heal people, heal people, I, you know, that's, that's something I'm finna write in my book because I like that. I mean, you know, my little black book or whatever. Okay. Your little, I like book, that. Your, little, your little black book of tools. I like that. Yeah, but my black book of tools. Yeah. Because, I like that. Yeah. That's a good, that, that's a good saying. I never, I never put those two together. You know what I mean? I hurt people, hurt people. I saw that all all day long. You know what I mean? And I lived that. You know, and like, and like they said, you know, nothing can be further from the truth when it comes to that. And 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 you know, on on the flip side of that, it's the same thing about heal people, heal people. And right, and I, I like that because, idea. You know, they never give us the positive end of anything. Right, you know right. They That's always want to keep us. Yeah. Like, you know, don't leave me in the degradation. Please pick me up and get me up in, you know, in some good yeah. stuff. You know what I mean? I want to land me on a good place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me land where I, I stand a chance to get up. I stand a chance to be right. better. I stand a chance to live a happier life. You know, something um, came up today um, about um, the choice. Happiness is a choice. About time. It's really a choice. Oh, Lord, we got trouble. Here we go. Mm, Big James is here, y'all. I was about to call you, big ass. Oh, shut up, little twinkie. 
<laughs> Hi, honey. Hello, beautiful. How you doing? All right. So, How you doing? What do you mean? Don't jazz. Nice so, um, oh, so I, you know, I realized that um, happiness is a choice, even in the midst of things that really go bad and things, you know, trauma, traumatic situations, bad circumstances, things that don't go our way. We can still choose to be happy in those times. And I know a lot of people think that that sounds too simplistic, but I can tell you from experience, I, you know, I, I've had as many negative things happen to me as anybody on this call. But I can promise you that um, choosing to focus on those things that are good in my life is a tool that I use. Um, I know one of the worst things ever happened to me was one of the worst experiences is obviously was losing my mother. But what I realized through, the, through, through trying to heal from that was whenever I thought about what I lost and thought about me personally, what I didn't have anymore, it was real painful. But when I thought about the fact that my mother had leukemia, um, I didn't know it until I looked at her death certificate because she never told us. But when I realized that she had leukemia and I know that she had been suffering and in pain, I was relieved that she wasn't in pain no more. So I didn't have the hurt. I didn't cry. And I could, and if I ever thought about all of the good things that she did, all of the thing, ways that she made me happy, all of those things, I was okay. But it was when I thought about what I didn't have, my own selfish thoughts is what tended to make me very sad. So even in a loss that I can honestly say my life is divided between before she died and after is two totally different existences. Um, I still understand how to, how to be happy even with her being gone. Why? Because I know that she would not want for me to be unhappy. She would not want for me to mourn her to the point that I can't be happy because she's not here. Um, and a lot of loved ones wouldn't want that. You know, they wouldn't want us to suffer in that way. Tony, I see you not in your head. Oh, did you want to say one, something? Yeah, Go ahead. yeah one, one more thing. It's crazy that you say that because there's two things that I that I say. One thing, I, once I learned, you know, that I'm responsible for my own happiness. You know, once I've learned that, my approach to things are different. You know what I mean? Because if things ain't going right, then that's on me. In a sense, in a in a large sense, you know what I mean. And another saying that I always live by is, and I read it when I was in prison. He said that the harder you fall, the higher you bounce, and your attitude determines your altitude. So, and that you know, I live by those things. You know what I mean. So, thank you. Yes, absolutely, Miss Tony. No, just agreeing with you. I, um, I wholeheartedly agree with you and the gentleman. Um, in in this process, uh, any advice or any any solutions or any any uh, a perspective that I can provide uh, for me is uh, is healing to help others heal and help them to see the things from you know the child's perspective and from another perspective and things that they didn't consider or. Um, as we've talked in relationships about um, the women and the role that women have taken in society, just understanding, you know, I was having a conversation with someone earlier today, as I've had in, in the past, in the past, um, a lot of us women took on the roles that we took because we had to, not because we wanted to. And we are also, you know, the, the, the products and victims of the things that have happened in society. But um Again, I agree, I wholeheartedly agree with the both of you in regards to your happiness because you come in this world by yourself and you're going to leave this world by yourself and only you can determine what your happiness looks like. Absolutely. Mr. Grant. I come in with my mama. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get a hug, all right. It's going to be a big old bear hug. Okay, and, and a little knuckle nookie to go with it. <laughs> right. Because at some point in time, they disconnected you from your mama. So you was on your <laughs> at own. At some point, right? What right. You, James? Today I want to check in with y'all. Um, 
Uh, I had a pretty good day today. Uh, therapy was good. Uh, I enjoyed it. Um, but what I want to say to y'all is a lot of times we always look at the consequences instead of looking at the journey and the experience mm -hmm. that we that, that we learn along our footsteps. Because every step we take, if we take a, a moment to look at or smell a rose, that's a new experience along the journey. Mm -hmm. You're on a lifelong journey. Everything is not going to be peaches and creams. Everything is not going to be uh, filet mignon steaks. It's going to be some times where you're going to, like them days when we on a lockdown and all we had was peanut butter and jelly and a, and a, and a, and a soup. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? Them are the days that you learn to appreciate who you are as an individual in your journey. Because them are the times when you see that it don't take a lot to validate who you are as an individual, as a person, as a loved one, as a father, as a son, as a spirit within yourself. And those are the moments that we are to go back and reflect on when times get hard out here in society. Them are the times when you go in that room when you was in that cell naked without a lockdown box. Them is the times that you understand who you are as that human, that human, that 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 essence of, of being man. Man is mine and mine is man. And I always say that and every time I say it, it re it it it, it revalidates to me who I am mm -hmm. and all my flow and all my journey. So just take your time. And I tell every brother that come home, learn to date yourself before you can date anyone else, because you don't know who you are. You think you know who you are until you taste something that you ain't never had before, until you experience something that you never experienced before and had a thought of something that you ain't never thought of before. I found out what freedom was many times over. And I've been out three years. I've been off parole. I got off parole in 13 months. I've been out of I've been out of prison since 2020, July 16th. Off parole August 16th, 2021. Here it is. I'm still touching my car door and saying, damn, I'm free. I pick up my keys and say, damn, I'm free. I go count my money and say, damn, I'm free. I wake up and I'm not in a six foot bed with a two inch thick mattress and I'm laying on a bed with a, with a comfort saying, damn, I'm free. These are the things that I take and treasure more than anything because these are the things that makes me know that I'm validated within myself and that I'm a free man. And that you're human, right? And that you can rebound from all of the traumas of being in that cell with the with the two inch mattress. You know what I'm saying? That was so so thin, you couldn't, you know, hardly get a good night's rest. You know, it's cold. All the different things and an environment that um that everybody suffers when they're incarcerated. Um, and so it's just a blessing. But I I really um I love the fact that this book. Um, it, it really gives you something to think about. It'll help you think about how, how you view these different characters in your community and how you can begin to create tools for yourself that will help you get over those things. If you find yourself, one of the things I found was that I could see, I guess the best way I want to say it is I know people that have multiple syndromes like just like um a lot of times they're called dual diagnoses um for for you know psychiatric things these are dual diagnoses oftentimes the the manipulator is um is the one that's self entitled right they tend to overlap each other um all addictions tend to attract other addictions and most people don't realize like you were saying um, the drug dealer doesn't realize he has an addiction just as well as the drug user. He's addicted to the money, right? He's addicted to, to all of those things. So he doesn't even understand 
just how um, how addicted he is and that he's suffering the same things. So, uh, but it's real nonetheless. Um, the addictions and the ways to overcome those are likewise the same. They're the same tools. Um, I found that I have been um, addicted to a person, right? Didn't even realize that's what it was. I was addicted to a person. But I had to use the same tools to get over that people use to get over other addictions to get over being addicted to this particular person. And I found that those are the things that actually helped me um, is treating it just like what it was, which was an addiction. And I had created an idol out of this person. I began to put more into that than I was putting into myself. That became more important to me than a lot of other things. What was, you know, so um, I treated it that way. And that's how it began to heal from it um, was to be able to move beyond it was treating it like it's an addiction. And again, I see a lot of the syndrome that we have in our community. They are, um, it's more than one. People often have more than one thing going on at a time um, because trauma begets trauma. Mm -hmm. Like you say, iron sharpens iron, but trauma begets trauma. Once you get started on that cycle, it you tend to attract it. It, it. it tends, especially if you focus on it. If people who focus on whatever you focus on, you're going to have more of it in your life. It doesn't matter whether it's good or bad, yeah. right? Whatever you spend your time and energy focusing on, that's what you're going to have. So these are the kinds of things that um, that I'm excited that we get a chance to talk about. I want to ask anybody have any specific questions they want to ask, any comments they want to make? Yeah. Uh-huh. Go ahead. You got to come back next week. Do you your book. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. How about you, Mr. Steffens? How you doing over there? You feeling okay? Yeah, I just want to say, Ms. Noreen, for 45 years, I was an angry man, you know, and when you talked about being hurt and how you want to hurt others, it's because of the way you're feeling. You're feeling down. You're feeling low. You're feeling miserable. That when someone reached out at you and did something to you that you disagreed, you want to see them in pain as much as you can have them to be. So, you know, today, especially when it's dealing with race, today I've learned to instead of reacting to someone's uh, a negativity, to stop and think about how I can respond to that negativity and how I can address it in a way that it won't make me feel angry, won't make me feel miserable, won't make me feel bad. So for the last... 12, 11, 12 years, I've been on that journey where that I want to be at peace. I want to be at understanding. I want to be there where that I can uh, go through life and say, well, if this guy don't like me for whatever reason, he don't like me for, or she don't like me for whatever reason, she don't like me for, that I can like myself. I can, I can love myself and I can love others. Yeah, that's awesome. See, that's why I always like to talk to you, Mr. Steffens. You always make my heart, you always warm my heart because you always have very insightful things to say. And your journey, um, I feel like with all of the obstacles that you face throughout your life um, that we've talked about before, I always find you to be extraordinary um, because you found a place of peace. You found a way to get to that. Um, and you did that for yourself. And I find that just to be extraordinary, um, you know, just just the whole journey. I mean, because it started, the traumas in your life started very, very young. Um, and um, it was just a series of things after that. So I'm just um, always amazed. And from day one, you've always had such positive things to say and insightful things that helped me to grow as well. So I'm just, um, I'm excited every time I get to hear you speak. And I know you had that tooth pulled and I know that's gotta be hard. Um, so I hope yeah. you it soon, like, ooh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, I wanna, I wanna um, get to, um, I wanna make sure, is there anything else you wanna say to the group? Uh, 
I want to congratulate uh, everybody that uh, came home. Um, the brother and uh, the black uh, flannel. Uh, congratulations uh, on your certificate uh, and your graduation. Uh, I'm 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 in the construction as well. I took up a uh, welding when I was in the fair. So, and and I and I say this. Uh, what I'm about to say to you and to the group is it's not this uh, in a braggadocious way, but. I want y'all to know what we can accomplish as being uh, ex-felons or uh, whatever. Uh, I took up welding in the feds, came home, I started a business with it, and I've traveled all over the uh, world with it. I went to Africa with it. I went to St. Croix to the Virgin Islands, and I've been all over the United States. And I tell people I took a prison trade. Uh, I told my counselor, I got to get some out of the deal being in prison. I said, y'all about to house me. I had 63 months. So I did three and a half years off a five year bid. I say, yeah. if y'all gonna house me that long, I gotta get some out of the deal. And she started laughing. So she was like, what you mean, Mr. Dawson? I say, I need something. I need a resource. I need a trade to where I don't never have to go back to the drug game. And I know if I accomplish this, it's gonna give me a foundation when I leave. So she placed me exactly where I wanted to go because when I first came, they told me, I had to go into the kitchen for at least a year before I can go to the uh the real trades. So I went to my counselor and I'm just like, like to me that 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 wasn't acceptable. I was like, I'm I don't plan on being a cook when I go home. I was like, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm passionate about. And when I explained to her my uh what was what my goals was, she saw my vision and she put me up in there, but. I always like to tell people that that's uh, in the reentry population, you know, sky's the limit, man. We control our future. Uh, something you said earlier about we can live out here. That's absolutely true. Uh, I like to tell people you can't run from the problem if you the problem. And you and you said you you saw that. You was like, if I'm the problem, how can I run from it? Uh, one of my family members would always say she was gonna leave LA and move to Atlanta. And I had to tell her, I was like, if you trying to run from you, you ain't gonna do nothing but create the same chaos in Atlanta that you create out here in LA. And she finally got it years and years uh, later. But man, I I salute all y'all on doing the work because I know it's not easy. I, I done been there. You know, it, uh, we walk into the unknown when it comes to uh, transformation. You know, we, we've been used to living a, a certain lifestyle not five and 10, 15 years. We've been living a certain lifestyle since birth because we 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 born there. A lot of us is born and raised in the projects and born and raised in the hood. So this is all we know. It's second nature for us to do what we do. So to step out of that realm and to do something totally different, man, that's like that that takes a, a strong individual, a strong mind to do that. So I commend y'all, man, and I salute all y'all for doing the work because again, I know it's not easy. So just keep being great, man. Keep doing y'all. And that's my words right there. And I, and I always like to say, iron sharpens iron. You know, y'all sharpen me, man. And I'm going to sharpen y'all. And, you know, that's how we're going to accomplish what we need to accomplish out here. Wonderful. Uh, Mr. Patrick. Damn. You got for I'm me. trying to speak to her. Oh, go ahead, kid. You want to say okay, something? Okay, hey. Hey, this is over here. Uh, listen, uh, I wanted to know from, from the author, uh, first, Maureen, do you got that book for me? You can keep it, because I want you to get to, get it to me. Here go yours, Se right here. Oh, okay, second, I wanted to know from the author that wrote the book, does he know about the group called GRIP? Uh, no, I, I, I've i never heard of GRIP. Okay, GRIP is the first time I ever heard, I ever heard, hurt people hurt people, heal people heal people. This mm -hmm. they theme. Oh, it, wow. It, it's in uh, San Francisco. It's uh, it's a it's a group that spread it all through the state prisons, oh. and uh, it, it's it it it's like mandatory if you go through the group. It's a one year group, and if you go through the group, you guarantee the parole date. Mm. Oh, oh, that's awesome. But the, hey, the group is really intense on healing you. Come on. And, and what we learned from that group was more than I learned in all the other groups I went to. Absolutely. And well, it taught awesome. me, it, and it taught me really what I really what hurt me is the reason why I was out there hurting people. 
Oh, come on. That's a blessing. And, you, and so when I when I my eyes finally opened, I had no more hatred for the other side. Come on. That's great. Absolutely. That's great. Hey, that's, that's speaking a lot for a person that went all the way to the shelf behind chasing a scar. Hey, Noreen, I'm going to call it a day. Okay, well, before you do that, why don't you go ahead and check out for me, okay? Well, I'm doing just fine, and I'm working hard to try to find a better job, and uh, I'm in a place to live, and uh, I'm doing everything I can to be a better person. Wonderful. Well, thanks for joining us tonight, Otis. Thank you, Maureen. All right, dude. But Bye -bye. Kate, thank you for sharing it here. Uh huh? Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, guys, thank so, you. So, I'm going to mute you because it's a lot of noise. Okay, he did. Uh, Patrick. Yeah, the nice thing about this is, you know, healing to heal and everything. It's like I said. Put, put yourself in a positive environment where you think better, not bad. You look better. You act better. And you're not in a bad element. In other words, be with better people. Be in a better environment. And whether you're uh, doing illegal activities or did illegal activities or you're thinking bad or you're doing bad, don't be there. You know, like we always say, the doctor says, if it hurts when you do this, then stop doing that. Right. So basically, you know, heal to heal. You heal other people. You can heal yourself. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bradley, final comments and thoughts for me? <laughs> yeah, I like what the brother was saying, the author of the book. Uh, he went to uh, in, you know, prison and he, he took up welding. He was in a, I look at that as being a negative environment, but you found something positive into the, in the environment. You know, you turned a negative into a, a positive by doing things that help yourself to grow and stuff. And uh, I would like to hear more. I wish he'd come back next week and share more about his book and stuff because, uh, like you say, that, 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 that healing, the, the groups and stuff, helps also help me. You know, well, I, did, I did so many different groups in prison. My whole thought was to get out of prison and try to help other people who's also seeking help. But like trauma, I didn't know what trauma was until I started taking up groups. That was when I was about 47 years old and I realized what trauma was. But by us sharing these tools and stuff, uh, coping skills and tools, we all we help one another. So I wish he would come back next week and share more about his book because I'm very interested in you know learning more about it. Hey, most definitely, I'll be back. Yeah. Hey, again, you know it's a blessing to be a blessing, man. Iron sharpens iron. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, Rufus. Final comments. Uh, I want to thank thank the brother for. Providing us with with a with a copy of the book, and uh, uh, I thank him for his comments, and and uh, I'm just happy to be here. Wonderful! Uh, can't wait to can't wait till you get get your stuff together too. That's exciting. I'm happy. Yeah. For you. Okay, I'm, thank you. I'm, I appreciate. It. Absolutely, um, Mr. Terrell. Any final comments today? I just want to say, uh, you know, everybody stay focused on the mission and what you have to do. Understand the devil going to always be poking at you, but it's how you respond to him. Because we already know it always get worse and it can be worse. <laughs> and uh, to the brother, you know, that just got a certificate, stay pushing, stay pushing. Because it's a place for you out here, and that's a career. That's not a job. That's a career. You can start your own business once you get out here and get some some experience. And uh, yeah, to the brother, uh, I can't think of his name that wrote the book. Mr. Uh, Dawson. Yeah, to Mr. Dawson. I missed you at the the Black Writers on tour, you know. But we fed. But I was a fed baby too. I did welder and all that stuff in there too. But uh, we all have to link up. You okay. know what I mean? And uh, you know get together, man. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you coming up. And this is what, this is the thing we do to inspire the people that's coming home and to help them as well, man, because we all in the healing process. You know, nobody's fully healed, but we're healing each other and we're healing ourselves. And that's what makes the journey even better. When we got people with like minds and like situations that are helping each other, because 
as dots, we just separate. But when we come together as a full circle, we strong and we stronger. You know, we can always help each other. You know, like I say, still sharp and still. So uh, I just want to thank you for coming down. Uh, like the brothers say, come on back, man, so they can well, get wait, more. But, but you know? didn't miss him. You didn't miss him at Black Riders. He was at Bomani's table, baby. I, no, no, no. I was moving oh. around. I was moving around. Oh, okay. I, okay. I, I was like, I no, he no, was no, right no. there. No, I met got him. got pictures briefly, together. Okay. But I kept going. You know, I was moving. I understand. I was on my feet the whole day. I didn't stop. I yeah. was like a damn kid in the candy factory. <laughs> yes, I understand now. Because I was like, wait, well, we got pictures together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, awesome. Yeah, I, I wanted to say, hey, uh, you made a good point when you said uh, about uh, our recovery, you know, taking it one day at a time. And it's an uh, old saying, how do you eat an elephant? Oh, what? If, yeah. if, if anybody didn't heard that, and the answer is one bite at a time. That's right. One, that's, that, right. that's how you eat an elephant. Some people think you got a gorge on it, just do this old crazy routine to try to eat the elephant, but it's like, nah, you just eat it one bite at a time. So like you said, man, we're work in progress every day. Mm -hmm. every day. All we got to do is just be willing to do the, uh, the work. That's the biggest thing, just being willing to do it and having a good support system is uh, a big thing too, like what we're doing right now. But something I want to add uh, to that, uh, I always tell people, it's good to have a support system but self-accountability is the best thing you can have because when you can't reach that support system, when you can't get in contact with that support system, you got to be able to talk your own self off that ledge. And yep. a lot of times we don't know how to talk ourselves off that ledge and then we can't get to that support system. And like you say, now we back incarcerated or, or we, God forbid, you know, we bodily harm or even a uh, death occur. So self-accountability, but most, most definitely a good support system. So, yeah, man, I'm 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 happy to be doing the work. Uh, and you know, and I looked through your book as well. So, uh, and my 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 young brother, uh, Anthony, he talk highly. He speak highly of you too, man. So I'm excited to uh to learn more about the work that you're doing too. So yeah, it's it's, it's good to be here with y'all, man. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. Yes. So, um, Miss Tony. Yeah, I just always uh, appreciate everyone, uh, everyone's perspective and the healing process because this affects the community. So I appreciate starting here and it seeping out into the community because we definitely need our community healed as much as possible. Awesome. Thank you, Ms. Roberta. Good night. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> if you don't quit it, you know. I heard everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little. I just processing. And y'all, yeah, clearly they had. They look. Let me just tell y'all that new way of life whooped on folks today. That's all I know. Cause y'all tired red. Y'all ain't even tired. Y'all tired red. You know. What I'm saying? I would like oh to say this. Huh? And next week we talk about that. Um, that uh, that thought of the day. The what, honey? The thought of the day that we got this morning. Uh, let me see. Let me see what it was, because I know y'all. And the answer, before I even know what it is, is yes. Because whenever, you know, I always like it when y'all pick the topic, because then y'all start talking and I get to listen. Well, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. I yeah. The, the yeah, thought I, of the I, day today I, was know the difference between being disrespected and feeling disrespected. Yeah. So that was pull me back here to today to the to the folks. So we definitely got that on the agenda next week. Um, because those are two different things. And y'all know I talk about that I didn't, a lot. Know, I didn't realize that for a minute. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh yes, darling. Yes. So yes, by all means, we can definitely talk about that next week. Um, and you remind me if somehow I get crazy in my head, because you know I'm old and crazy. So you remind me, but we definitely can put that on the agenda. Um, Ms. Ward, can you talk to us? Any final comments from you, my love? My final comments are, it would be nice to send that um, thought for today out to everybody so they can mull over it until next week and then they can come up with some, some thoughts they want to say. But I'll be glad when all of us collaborate and come together so we can help these guys coming home to get their um, ID and their life, life documents a lot quicker than they're getting them because that hurts my heart. 
that people take three months to get something that I can normally get in one day. So thank you. So I definitely, we definitely need, you and I need to get together and coordinate with the staff at um, Francisco Homes um, so that we can offer that to them because that is a um, skill that you have um that can help them and Francisco <laughs> Home tends to be good about um you know letting people come in and, and help the guys so um but you and I need to coordinate um offline I think first I don't have an email list or anything like that for for the guys um so what I think I can do is I can send it to Smitty who sends out the link and ask him to send it out so that everybody has that thought for the day Everybody else, I think I can contact. I know I can contact Terrell, you know, all of you guys. We all have it. I can oh, give it to, to Vakas, and, you know, we can make sure that everybody has that um, and can deal with that. Miss Di. Once again, thank you for the book, sir. I enjoyed the conversation because, you know, healing yourself and still working through your healing is the only way that you can start making progress in your own life as well as others. Thank you. And Mr. Thornton? Hey, babe. So glad you could join us, but you was way late today, sugar. I can't oh. hear you. Oh, okay, there I go. I know. I apologize to the group for being late. Like, I really have to be more mindful of my time. Yes, like, indeed. I was slipping. Like, I went on like a little, um, well, it was a date with my wife and everything. Cause, and I'm glad the group is today because I kind of had like, you know, I had like a little blow up this morning and everything, which I walked it off came back, we went out to lunch and everything. Then coming from lunch, I had another blow up Ooh. where I I really like um got to apologize because I called my wife a, a bitch earlier. Like, ooh, 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 ooh. oh wow. Oh wow. Okay, like, so now you're going to make us have to go long cuz oh, wow. we got we got we got to make sure you understand what's going on here, okay? Yeah, so but listen. see but go ahead. not to we justify know, not, to, not to justify not to make no excuses, but I was so like irritated with myself and with what was going on that I told her she was being an irritating bitch. Wow. And that's not even me like to disrespect no woman, especially not my wife and everything. Like, right. And I got to really like apologize for that. And then um, like the topic when I just came on, that's why like I feel like God does everything for a reason because I actually was missing group and came in at 650. Like, damn, I got to sign up for group because we really was just sitting down right now doing a little puzzle together, like putting together a puzzle that she had got me for my birthday and everything. We was putting that together. And then I told her, like, hold on, I got to check in with group real quick. It's, I'm already late. And then to come on and hear that um, hurt people hurt people because that's something that I do believe in when you hurting, like you lash out and you hurt people. And right now, like, I got so much going on because – I got my hand smashed in a big rig the other day and it literally cut off the tip of my finger the other day. What was that on, on the 13th? So that was last Thursday. And then they've been screwing, they've been screwing around with my pain medication, all type of stuff. Cause the doctor didn't sign off on the daily dosage. It's always something every time I went to the pharmacy. So it's like, I allow like my own little issues to cloud my judgment earlier. And, you and know, I'm, I'm grateful to hear you acknowledge you're wrong. Yes, yeah. because your wife can get over the disrespect. Yeah, you acknowledged it. Mm -hmm. um, if you begin to try to justify it, that's where the hurt. That's like pouring salt in the wound. Exactly. Right? Like, the whole, the whole. Off and just start pouring salt in that wound right there. Right? Yeah, and I and I most definitely gotta be on time next week like y'all say it's a difference man feeling disrespected and being disrespected because that's what i was telling her like man you being disrespectful to me as your husband and everything like you disrespecting me and this and that and she like how did i disrespect you all i did was told you this told you that and then i even like was going further like what's the way you said it ain't what you say is how you say it like you've been like, condescending like i just kept on digging <laughs> Yeah, you just pouring salt. You just yeah, I just kept it all up, ain't you? That's all. Yeah, you make sure you get your butt back here, Miss Ward. You want to say something? I see your hand up. He didn't take the five second rule. Mr. I didn't take the five Mr. second rule, Mister Withers. Yes. First of all, you disrespected your wife. 
to me. That's just my personal opinion. Now, can can she come on the group with you next week? Yes, she can. All right, thank you. Yes, she can. If she want to, <laughs> yeah. but I'm pretty, I'm pretty yeah. sure she will want to. <laughs> well, yeah, by all means, she's always welcome. You know, yeah. Um, again, this group is for to help not just the person that was incarcerated, but those of us that were loved ones. Mm -hmm. Those of us that have suffered because there are things that we know about you. She may not know in terms of why you're doing things the way you're doing them. Exactly. I it's wish she was a certain way. Because I, um, I came downstairs and she's upstairs taking care of something right now. I wish like she was downstairs right now so she could chime in for a couple of seconds or so. Well, you know what? Um, we got enough time because James has to check out and I have to check out. If Call her. Get her. Go get her and let her come holler. And oh. in the meantime, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let James go ahead and do his checkout, okay? All right. Because again, this this group is about healing all of us. Um mm -hmm. and, and making sure that we can all move forward as a community. If we can heal this individual and feel that heal this in your case, it'll be your family, then we yeah. can heal our community. And and that takes a lot of times it takes all of us because again, there are things that you go through. That mm. the guys and, and ladies that have been incarcerated understand that she may not understand if she's never been incarcerated. No, she so, never been. Yeah, see, so it, it's, look, look, y'all come home crazy a lot of times. I uh, know. <laughs> right? And was, it's not your fault. Just to, but still, fault. you got to remember. She, anyway. She's been out be here on her own for how many years without you? For Absolutely. So I'm gonna go ahead, James. Let you go ahead and, and have your check out, sweetie. Mine's a simple. I apologize for being late. Um, I did uh, have to take care of my mom. Just got out of a rehab center, and I'm still working on my health. Uh, today I went through acupuncture, so it kind of wore me out. Um, but uh, from my test results. I got a turn, it's getting better, and uh, I'm working towards it, and I'll still be here. As long as God bless me to get up in the morning, I'm going to be here. That's awesome. And for me, awesome. yeah, for me, um, you know, you guys are all a blessing to me. Um, I get as much out of this, and I learn as much as I, as, as I give um, in these exchanges. And so um, I'm grateful. I feel like, um, again, what I said about this book is that if we just get past the hurt. different syndromes and the different personality abnormalities in this book, we can help ourselves. We can help the community. And so, oh gosh, are we, is she, she wants to talk to us? Oh man, thank you, ma'am. I don't, what's your name? Hello. Hello, everybody. My name is Sabrina. Sabrina, thank you for being willing to talk to us. Um, and and your husband indicated that he he was disrespectful today, and um and we were talking when he came on about you know we were talking about hurt people hurting people, and mm -hmm. um and he has acknowledged in our presence publicly that he was disrespectful and that he hurt you. Um, and, you know, and what we um, endeavor to do here at Free to Heal is we come together every week. We're a group of people. Some of us have been incarcerated. I am like you. I'm a loved one of someone who was incarcerated. I loved a person who was incarcerated. Um, we have one person in particular who was the child of someone incarcerated. And we come together every week to talk about those things and the ravages of what incarceration is incarceration is done not only to the person incarcerated but to the loved ones and so um we, we just wanted to give you an opportunity um I think your husband very distinctly said you know that he called you out your name and it was it was not nice um and you know he understands all of what he's going through but what I was telling him is that there are things that he goes through that you will have no way to know and there's like strange behavior and you're like, why is that a thing? And in this group, yeah. we get we get to explore those things and it may help you to understand 
the weird things that, because to us it's just strange, like, you know, because we never been incarcerated. We don't know all of the challenges that he went through and those things that he did in those places his mind had to go to survive that. And so this group, people tend to be very open and they um, share what it is and we're really trying to heal. So um, we're at the end of the group for tonight, but next week we're going to come back and we're going to talk about um, the difference between being disrespected and feeling disrespected. And I just want to um, ask you, you know, if you feel like it and you want to, please join us. Um, I think I also you can go on our YouTube channel and look at some of the um, past videos, which may give you insight into the things that he's going through um, that you may not understand. There's so, there's so many things that I've learned um, in working with the population and, and having these conversations that I think it can save families. And um, I know your road is not easy because I've been you. You know what I'm saying? I get it. Yeah, because the you first know? thing he says is, I will never let nobody talk to me like that. And I'm like, what? It's not that serious. And he's like, no. I'm like, it's not that serious. But he takes it to like being disrespected. I'm like, what? No. So yeah. I think it's minor, and he think it's way up here. That is, and we got to well, understand. I, I talk the about that, that she was by herself. Well, go ahead, Di, What were you gonna say? He has to understand the mind frame she was in with the time he was in prison. It's not yeah. that she's being disrespectful to you. She know you are husband. You never have to repeat that. She knows that already. Mm -hmm. But you know, we have as a person, a loved one on the outside. It's hard for us as well as it's hard for you. It's very hard. It's harder for us than you really would even imagine how hard it is because we right. wait on a phone call. We wait right. on a visit. It's very, and you're trying to go to work. You're trying to take care of your kids. You're trying to pay the bills. I'm trying to see your package. It's a whole lot. And for right. you to come home and keep screaming, you my husband, I know who you are. Right. You never got to exactly. tell me that. Right. You got to tell me that. I agree. Right. I agree. And, and another thing with me is and 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 I just keep it real like this. Them officers talk to us so jacked up. So saying that you're not going to talk to me like that, you out of prison, but that's still that mentality that when people say certain things in a certain way to us, mm -hmm. we go back because I do it all the time. People right. talk, talk out of line to me. I get yeah. upset and I got to talk back. Too. I don't. I don't cuss, but I say some stuff to them. But that's the thing, because we we were we were having to hear them talk to us and say things to us just because they were the authority, and they wouldn't say that to us no other time. But yeah, yeah. Right. we were verbal we were verbally abused right. by our oppressors, and it's a trigger for us. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to recommend uh, my sister Darlene Burke's group for you guys, Ten Toes In. Because it's a it's a it's an outstanding relationship group for for people who have been in prison and their loved ones, so they can have a better understanding and they have a support group for the women and the men and the relationship because it goes a lot deeper than what we actually talk about. We talk about it here on Free the Hill, but she actually has a program to where it's 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 dedicated to relationships of you guys' magnitude. And, and you know, uh for that Cheryl was absolutely right. We get triggered off. You just can't say anything to me because I don't give a damn who you is. I'm going to last <laughs> back out at you. And I might not cuss you out, but I'm going to speak my mind because you ain't the police now and I ain't got to hold my tongue back. You know what I'm saying? See, the thing is... But it's a trigger. It's a trigger. It is a trigger. You know what I mean? And sometimes is... you trigger off. If you don't catch yourself, you'll find yourself saying some things, you know, and like somebody else said, you didn't take that five-second count. You know what I'm saying? Because... Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You just, you, you, she triggered you off and you didn't know how to cope with it at that point in time. But this is a learning episode and we all hear. Yeah, because you know, I'm like, not that guys. serious. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, she, see, the thing is, she can, she can go crazy and talk loud <laughs> and all that and then cuss me out, everything. And then five seconds later, Honey bun, come here, come cuddle with me. It's like, hell yeah, oh, no. Fuck all that. I ain't cuddling with nothing. Like, I'm at war now with my brain now. And then I told her, I wish she was a dude, because if she was a dude, I was still on her. Okay. And it would make you feel better in the moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, she be going, and then five seconds later, 
she ready to cuddle and kick it and all. Because and, it's not that serious. But me, I be still having to bring myself down. Yeah. I have to bring myself down. It's a learning process, right. brother. You are not in prison no more, Damon. You <laughs> no, are I'm not in prison no more. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and, and this is why, again, the she's not a correctional <laughs> officer. No, if she's a correctional officer, I'd probably be in a hole already. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't know how I made it out of Folsom Prison. I literally chased the CO up to the fifth tier in the one block one day, telling him to throw his shit up for talking crazy to me. And people, a white boy literally had to grab me and say, Taco, man, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't do it. Because I chased the man from the from the Nobody fourth floor on the, to like the fifth floor, ready to go to war with him. Because that's how bad he had me just from talking crazy to me. Because that's a trigger for me. Like, I ain't, since I was a child at nine years old, I ain't never let nobody talk slick to me. You talk slick to me, I don't give a damn who you is. Like, I'm getting on you. And this is so it's like this is why the conversation is going to be good because as I've said many, many times on Free to Heal, he gotta remember he that's a learned behavior he has. Of course, but, exactly. but this is also the point. This is also the point is that what is considered disrespect in the penitentiary it's is not here. No, it's not here. It's about this small, okay? Mm -hmm. What's considered disrespect out here? is way bigger okay you see the difference okay mm -hmm. so your notion that you being disrespected there's no intended disrespect and and there's a way but but also sabrina needs to understand that it's a trigger right and I just that, talk the loud. Fact that for I just him talk loud. Uh, <laughs> i said i just talk loud i'm ghetto i'm from watts i don't know baby. how you want me to talk I it's okay. You know what? I it's got the okay. same problem. And listen, I had a guy, so I, I want to share this with you guys, and I'm gonna let y'all go. Um, at when we were doing groups in person at the Francisco Homes, it was a guy. He told me that his mother was talking to him in murderous terms, y'all, <laughs> because she was talking loud and she cursed. So I <laughs> said to him, I said, "What I want you to do is, I want you to go to that door over there. I want you to open it." Put your finger in it, and I want you to slam the door. I know this is kind of personal if you were up right now, uh, Mr. Whitney. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? But I said, and I want to know if you're going to say, ouch, that really hurt. Or if you're going to go, oh, shit, that hurt. Okay? Then, okay. What I was trying to explain to him that what he heard from his mother when she was speaking loud and using curse words was pain. Hmm. It was the expression of the pain because the relationship she had taken care of him and supported him for 24 years when he was down. And a couple years before he got out, he got married to somebody. So when he came home, his whole focus was on his wife and not his mother, which as it should have been. And I had to explain to his mom, your expectation of him is unrealistic. As a husband, he must focus on his wife. Right. Relationship. That is his job. That's the man you raised him to be. That's why he got married. married now. But for his for for him <sighs> to understand, her talking loud um, was no more than just being loud. Okay, <laughs> and it's one of the things with black women. We are we loud. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. True. Um, and it and it don't mean nothing to us in that way. It doesn't. I can tell you this. One of the things my son, he's an actor and his one of his characters is fresh out. Right. But mm -hmm. anytime he's portraying the, the the incarcerated dude, he always talk real low. You know, you know that's how y'all talk. You know what I'm saying? Y'all make sure. Mad daddy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so don't nobody misunderstand whether or not you're being disrespectful or not. OK, but me, <laughs> Sabrina can't talk like that all the damn time. <laughs> we'll, let me just tell you this let me tell you this Thornton half the time we don't even know we loud right? ain't that the truth Sabrina for real okay. she don't no I'm to tell her Break it down. okay so now that's going to be your signal that's going to be your signal right you do that again you see that Sabrina what is it Thornton what's the okay 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 that, that's the code okay because I'm getting ready to get tricked okay <laughs> We're going we're gonna to start with that from now till next week. And when we come back next week, we're going to talk more about 
um, feeling disrespected, being disrespected, and a difference in a feeling. Because I also say this, a feeling is just that, it's a feeling. Mm -hmm. It don't mean it's true. It don't mm. mean it's true. So I just, again, I want to thank all of you guys for being here. Um, I love you guys for just participating and being vulnerable and open and honest. And you're welcome here at any time. Again, Sabrina, I encourage you to go on YouTube and look at our videos because there's a lot of insights that they all share. Um, okay. They've been doing it throughout the years that will give you insight into what you're dealing with in him, things that have developed um, that he may not even think about. Um, right. and realize that they're there, um, mm -hmm. but they're triggers for him. And this will help you to understand. And at the same time, Thorne, understanding that as the women on the outside, we have had to do all of it ourselves. All the work. All the work. We, 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 don't, we get triggered quicker. We're not interested in controlling you and telling you what to do and all that kind of stuff. That's not even where it's coming from. We just been on a treadmill trying to survive and we don't even know how to stop and slow down long enough for you to get in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't even know how to slow. We, 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 we just, okay. So just imagine we on the freeway, 70 miles an hour. And you want me to pull over and do 30. I and can't you, do it. And, and, no, you want to, you got to get behind the wheel, but the car can't stop. I don't even know how to stop. Mm -hmm. I'm scared if I stop the people behind me going to run into the back of us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I only know one mode. So this is awesome. Again, I welcome you, Sabrina. I thank you for being willing to have this conversation. Thornton, I really thank you for being um, honest, okay, honest and vulnerable um, and being willing to admit openly that you were wrong um, because that way you guys can heal, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you can't heal if you're, if you're hiding and you're justifying and that kind of thing. So again, this has been another great, um, free to heal. And I encourage everybody check us out on all of the social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and certainly, um, leave us your comments in, in the section, uh, comment section, anything you want us to talk about. And we'll be back with you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye everybody. Thank you, Sabrina. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye you guys. Thanks bye. for having me. You're welcome.